Oh, it's a beautiful puzzle. Just hope we can solve it today. Go and click the bubble. Let's get this daily puzzle on the way. Do mm -hmm. All right. I assume you're here solving it. Because I'm here. I'm with you. I'm with you today. Today I'm with you. Okay, if rook f7 and king e king to g8, we can just play knight takes e7 check, queen takes, and then rook g1 check and take g5. So rook f7, we can safely assume that king to e8 is the only move, which opens up the idea of rook takes e7 check, which is now a double check. He plays king f8. Then we play rook f1 check. He plays king to g8. Um, and then what? I don't quite know. Wifey's calling me. Sorry about that. Um, if rook f7 check, king e8, rook takes e7, double check. He takes it. I'm oh, sorry, king f8. Rook f1 check again. I mean, we can go back to f7 check, and when he plays king e8, I just didn't see a uh, a new maneuver that made that any better. So again, if rook f7 check, king to e8. Rook takes e7 check, king to f8. Rook to f1 check, king to g8. There's so many moves there. I mean, one of them is just knight f6 check. And when he goes back to f8, isn't rook f7 mate? Is that six moves? One, two, three, four, five. That's a mate in five. Hmm. Rook f7 check. If king to g8, again... Knight takes e7 check, queen takes, rook g1 check, queen up, rook takes, that's mate. So rook f7 check, king e8, rook takes e7 check, king f8, rook f1 check, king to g8, knight f6 check, king to f8, rook f7 is mate. Seems to me like a mate in five is on the docket. Oh, <laughs> Okay, I had it right. I had it right 100%. But I forgot about the computer move. Duh. Didn't even consider bishop f5. <laughs> you like this chess kid tea today? Boom. Represent. All right. Okay, well, um, what happened here was, you know, pretty straightforward. Again, if we consider that every move I calculated left the opponent with either one or two legal options, which, again, is even better than just one or two options we think which is also how you calculate at a high level. A lot of times you don't have mating nets all the time, right? We don't win chess games like this every day. So the the principles of this uh, higher order, you know, chess calculation that we've talked about is um, based on this, you know, checks, uh, captures, these uh, powerful tempo moves, which usually are based on recognizing what pieces in your opponent's camp are weak, undefended, out of place, uh, you know, on the edge of the board. And... Um, those sort of things will help you even in positions where you're not calculating only one option for your opponent because not every chess position is that simple. And you're still able to kind of take that sort of priority mindset into, you know, focusing on those moves as being the first options and, and uh, always keeping, uh, keeping ready for those opportunities when they strike, right? And so that's as you get better, you start to just smell blood, so to speak, like a shark. You just know these kind of tactics exist because somebody's king is in the center and because his rooks are disconnected. Right, and that's the skills you want to learn: is smelling blood, recognizing when when there's weak, uh, when there's a weak development, a weak formation, you know, weak pawn structures. You recognize that uh, certain types of tactical patterns occur against those things, and so we just we find those things based on that. And rook f7, there really wasn't much else for me to consider. As soon as I, as soon as I was able to dismiss, honestly, that um, that uh, that king to g8, which is like the other second legal move as an option because of knight e7 here, we just kind of knew it was just a matter of time. 
And I only thought it was a mate in five because I forgot about Bishop at five. So, all right, I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed today's daily puzzle. It's April 7th. Uh, we didn't really mess around any today, and we got right to the point. And I uh, hope, I hope uh, you all uh, go ahead and give me a like on the video. Make sure you subscribe, and we'll talk to you later.